Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents Suspense. Mr. Rogers? Give me an outside line, honey. Wait a minute, can't you? Mr. Rogers and Mr. Gladwin calling. Come on, honey. I'm busy. Can't you see she's talking to Mr. Rogers? All right, go ahead, please, Mr. Gladwin. All right now. Thanks. Calling your bookies, I suppose. How'd you guess? Bonnie, Eddie, how'd I run it today? Horse racing. Wrong again, sweetheart, dog racing. There's a difference? Of course, they got midgets for jockeys. Bonnie, listen. For the first and second, give me five dollars on mother's despair to place. And a couple of bucks on defective, on a nose. Yeah, and I'll be down later on to watch him run. Picked off a 50 to one shot yesterday. Uh, but you'll die broke. Yeah, but while I'm alive, wow. Uh, for nothing, you get nothing. That's the rule of life. Look at the records. There's plenty of evidence right in front of you. Why do people borrow money? Because they can't live within their income. Because they want to get something for nothing. Never mind, pal. Ah, thrift. That's the only way to get through life. A couple of bucks ahead of the game. Thrift. Thrifty Horace. Yeah. <laughs> Thrifty Horace. Look at me. Yeah, I'm looking. I wear the same suit every day for two years. All day long, I hear you squandering $2, $5, $10 on dogs. Oh, I'll be at my club for luncheon. Yes, sir. I'll be back about three. Oh, the auditors are coming at two. The auditors? Why, they're not due until next week. I know, but they called and changed it. Well, why didn't you tell me I... Oh, never mind. Goodbye, Miss Dawes. Goodbye, Mr. Maybe. Goodbye, Mr. Rogers. Uh, so long, Keith. Goodbye, Mr. Mifflin. <laughs> The auditors? Did he say the auditors? That's right. Now, why now? Let me see your books, Mr. Maybe. What? Hmm, what's this, Mr. Maybe? Have you been juggling the records, Mr. Maybe? Oh, be quiet. This afternoon, he said this afternoon. Say, you don't suppose Mr. Rogers thinks there's something wrong, do you? What do you... You haven't been blabbing to him about me playing the dogs, have you? Maybe he thinks I'm taking money to play the dogs. Oh, don't be silly, Eddie. Don't be silly. Well, wow. just get a little jumpy when people start making special audits. Every time something goes wrong, they always look at me. You, you got nothing to worry about. Man has worn the same suit for two years. Salad for your lunch. Oh, good. Horace. Hmm? Look. How do you like it? How much did it cost? Do you have to ask that first? I'm not a rich man. How much did it cost? Well, do you like it? Yes, yes, sure, I like it. Mm -hmm. 
But our dreams are over now, Cora. Send the hat back. Oh, Horace, please let me have it. Send the hat back. What are you talking about? Hmm? I'm sorry. I'm talking about you and about me, about a couple of auditors. Auditors? What's the matter? You haven't lost your job, have you? No, I still got my job. What are you talking about? About some auditors that are down at the office. They're probably down there right now waiting for me to come back from my lunch. I can still eat lunch. Prison hanging over my head and I eat lunch. Prison? What have you done? I've tried to make you happy. Hats. Dresses. Parties. I've tried to give you everything you've wanted, but on my salary you can't afford it, so what do you do? Yes, yeah, stealing. That's what I've been doing. Down there at that loan office all day long with money on the table, money in the drawers, money every place you put your hands and well, a little of it sticks. How much? How much? Enough for hats and dresses, parties, expensive furniture. Enough for almost nine years of it. Almost $25,000. Send the hat back, Cora. Send it back. Florida Confidential Loan Company. Good afternoon. I'll connect you. Mr. Rogers. Who's calling, please? The auditors for the books. Oh, yes. Just a moment. Mr. Rogers, the auditors are here. All right, right through there. Thank you. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Step in this way, please. Good afternoon. Hello. The auditors? That's right. Say, how is old boy, yes? Yeah? Uh, call Mrs. Maybe for me, will you, please? What do you want, Eddie? How'd you like to turn five bucks into 250? What? How'd you like to turn five bucks into 250? The line is busy, Mr. Maybe. Should I try again? What? I said the line 250. is busy. Please, please, one of you at a time. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, please excuse me. I, my head, I, I've, I've got a headache. Oh. What were you saying? Mrs. Maybe must be talking on the phone. Do you want me to try it again? Yes, please, would you? No, no, wait a minute. Don't bother. Maybe you want. Yes, uh, what do you mean, uh, 250 today? Like that. There's a dog running at Bubbling Brook in the fourth. He's at, at least 50 to 1. A man would be a fool to bet odds like that. A hunch. I got a hunch. Look, what do you do here all day long? You lend money, right? A buck for you, a buck for you, and a buck for you. You're a philanthropist. That's what you are. Now, the Florida Confidential Loan Company was organized for... Never the mind the prospectus. Look at the dog's name. Altruism. Huh? Altruism. Is that a hunch or is that a hunch? What do you say, Horace? Five bucks on a nose. What can you lose? Five bucks? But look what you can win. 250 fish like that. I'm not a betting man. But this ain't betting. This is like money from home. Five bucks should never miss it anyway. No, I'm not in the habit of placing bets. Oh, Miss Dawes, you step into my office, please. There's something I want you to do. Eddie, watch the board. Eddie. Take a flyer, Horace. Take a chance. I wouldn't push it, but this time I got a feeling, honest. Eddie, I... I've got to talk to you. I want... I want your advice very badly. You're asking me for advice. Eddie, come here. It's imperative that I get a hold of some money at once. Well, you worked for a loan company. No, you don't borrow from Peter to pay Paul. What's that? Oh, never mind now. The point is that I need it very desperately. Thrifty Harris, what do you don't need money for? The subject. The subject. How much? Twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand dollars. 
I've got to have it right away. I've got to have it before they finish going over the book. You didn't steal it, Horace. Quiet, please. Come here. You were talking about a 20 to 1 shot tonight. Uh, do they accept bets of $500? Sure. Are you serious? Eddie, listen to me. Will you help me? Yeah, sure. Sure, I'll help you. Altruism is a dubious choice. We have the other four dogs stop at a fire hydrant. Hey, who are you? Zarati's with me. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Work in the same office with him. Iris, maybe. This is Bonnie. How do you do? No offense, pal. Just got to be careful. These cops knocked off four books yesterday. No kidding. No kidding. The town's getting too hot and I'm blown in the morning. You want to make a bet, pal? Uh, altruism. You too, huh? You must have had a talk with the rabbit. I'm going to see you five. <laughs> Five hundred dollars on altruism. Five hundred bucks? Are you kidding? What's the matter, Bonnie? Can't you cover it? Yeah, well, I, I can cover it, but the guy must be out of his mind. Uh, Five hundred dollars on altruism. Hello, Charlie. I want to lay off two fifty on altruism. Johnny, when you get the door. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, here's his ticket. And I hope this baby isn't any plant. Don't worry, he ain't a plant. Sorry, you're going to be walking out of here with 250 grand and you're No, I changed my mind. I want my money back. It's too late, Fussy. You can't cancel a bet when they're at the post. They're off. That's no way to they're run away a business. At they're off. Relax, Joe. Sam, Powell, Enjoy Johnny, the race. You're going to be in a clear after this race. And if I lose? Well, we'll see what's good in the fifth. Don't worry. They haven't finished the books yet. Yeah, then there's a sixth, there's a seventh, there's the eighth. Pretty soon, another $25,000. Altruism coming up. Horace, altruism coming up. get back to our suspense story. Did I ever tell you the case of the bandit and the battery? Well, here's the way it all happened. You see, there's Terry the Hood, and he's leaving with the loot. He just jumps in his car, and he's away. Ah, but he won't get far, because there's Clancy the cop ready to go in fast pursuit. Uh-oh, looks like Clancy's not going anywhere, because his battery's gone dry, and it's completely dead. <laughs> well, you see, that was the time that Clancy learned the hard way that one of the major causes of battery failure is extreme loss of water, which can mean a dry, dead battery. Well, of course, what Clancy should have had is the famous Autolite Stay Full battery, because this, of course, is the battery that needs water just three times a year in normal car use. Now, let me show you why. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles, Otherwise, they'll get together and short-circuit the plates. 
But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stay Full battery. Every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it, holding the active materials in place to reduce that flaking. You see, there's the fiberglass, the feature that gives such real advantages to the Autolite Stay Full battery. Now, while the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plates, the Autolite Stay Full doesn't need all that extra space. So we use it to advantage by putting it up above. Now, if we put electrolyte in both batteries, there's space left up above for extra water. But you see, an ordinary battery holds only this much extra water, while the Autolite Stay Full battery with that extra space holds over three times the liquid reserve of ordinary batteries. And that's why your Autolite Stay Full needs water just three times a year in normal car use. Well, say, friends, here's another very important fact you should know about. The Autolite Stay Full battery gives you longer life in tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. So why don't you enjoy greater safety and longer life with an Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water just three times a year in normal car use. Take a tip from me and see your Autolite battery dealer tomorrow. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Now, back to the second act of Double Entry, starring Virginia Gilmore and Thanks Robert M. Hart. Police, open up in there. Break it in, huh? Let go of that! Hold it, boys. Hold it. You aren't going anywhere. Hello, oh, Barney. Are you ready? Legend, Tom. I'm clean, baby. Clean as a whistle. Yeah. You the guy who runs this joint? No. I just dropped in for a game of bridge. Yeah, well, we need a fourth down at the station house. Take him away, Tom. Figured you'd come back here with the money. Got good news for you, Horace. The auditors didn't finish the books. They have to come back tomorrow. Nobody's even going to know the money was missing. Thank heaven. Only what about the rest of it? The rest of it? Twenty-five grand is yours and two hundred and fifty is mine. But I figure there's at least a couple of hundred grand in that bag. Hmm? Oh, I never thought. Well, naturally, it'll be returned to your friend Barney. Barney? Don't be a dope. It isn't his. Oh, neither does it belong to us. No, I'm returning this money. I'm not going to get any deeper into embezzlement. Well, suit yourself. Give me 250 fish and I'll be on my way. Eddie, I can't thank you enough. I helped you out of a jam. Didn't oh, cost me believe anything. me, my gratitude. Forget it. But I still think you're crazy for giving the money back to Barney. No, Eddie. Here's your $250. Thanks. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Rogers, what are you doing here? Horace, maybe. Oh, you misunderstand. Misunderstand? What is there to misunderstand? Well, let me explain. Explain? What is there to explain? I find you here at night with the safe open and you stealing money. No, you don't understand. I'm not stealing money. Oh, you came to borrow. No, I'm not borrowing money either. No, you came to give us That's right. I came here to give you $25,000. All right, all right. I can't say that I'm not surprised. Of all my employees, you're the one man that I considered. But I'm not stealing. Oh, you expect me to believe that? Well, what are you doing here tonight? Never mind that. What are you doing, Mr. Rush? I'm calling the police. Please, listen. No. I stole that money. I admit no. I stole it, but the tonight I'm bringing it back. I'm putting the money back. Can't you understand that? Hello? Give me that phone. Hello. 
Ticket, slip, or anything else on me. Uh huh. Well, I'm blowing town in the morning. But first, I got a little score to settle. A guy by the name of Horace, maybe. He owes me some dough. And I'm going to collect it. Right. to me something terrible's happened. There's a man here looking for you. man, a policeman? No, he's kind of tough character. He said he'd be back later. Well, the bookmaker. Bookmaker? Cora, we're in trouble, terrible trouble. What? I've committed murder. What? Cora, the police are probably on my trail already. Murder? Cora, help me. Murder who? I'll tell you. Today at the office, there was a chance to recoup. I took it. Cora, we've got to pack and run away. I don't know where. I don't... Murder who? Cora, I've killed Mr. Rogers. Well, there, was a, there was a misunderstanding. That he, didn't, he didn't know what I was doing, and I became enraged. Oh, we must run away, Cora. We must run away. Where? Why, where? Who knows where? I don't know. Anywhere. Mexico, South America, any place where they can't find us. Hurry up, Cora. Hurry. Hurry. Any minute now, they'll find Mr. Rogers. Then they'll be after us. They'll be after us. Horace? We've got to get enough shirt. We've got to get socks. Horace, listen. Yes? I didn't kill him. No, but I did. I did. You're a fool. A fool? Oh, Cora, yes. I'm a fool. A fool who'll deny it. I've been a fool right from the beginning. Go revile me all you want to, but later. Not now, Cora. Not now. There isn't time. There's plenty of time. I'm not going anywhere. Cora, I've committed murder. Well, I haven't. Well, I should stick my neck out. Well, everything I did, I did for you. Thanks a lot. Who asked you to? Now I've got to give up everything. This apartment, everything I like. Run away with you. Cora. No, thanks. Cora, I'm your husband. Everything I did, the bookie, Rogers, the money. Well, who asked you to? Sure, I might have known. Who's that guy? Policeman after me. It's Barney after his money. You won't help me. I'm not going to ruin my life. Oh, well, it's all right for me to ruin my life for you, is it? That's no problem. Cora, Cora, please. Delay him for a while. Give me time to run away, please. I told you that I'm not going to get involved in this. Cora. You got yourself into it. You can get yourself out of it. Mr. Nicholas. Mrs. Maybe. Eddie. The same, chum. Yeah. Eddie, I'm in, I'm in terrible trouble. I know, Rogers. How do you know? Oh, it gets around fast. Guess what Rogers was doing at the office. And you're in a big jam, Horace. Yeah, I know. I'm glad you're here. Everybody yeah. else has deserted me, Eddie. I've been thinking about the bag, Horace. I see you remembered to bring it with yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Horace, I figured there's just about enough in this bag to keep me from going to the cops. Eddie, that's blackmail. You call it anything you want. All I know is what's my cut for keeping you out of trouble. Why should I stick my neck out? You too, huh? First Cora, no, now you. You keep me out of this. You got Only... yourself into it, you're going to get yourself out of it. Yes, but I'm willing to keep my trap shut for this little black bag. <laughs> Last. It makes me laugh too. All your talk about thrift and honesty and not getting nothing for nothing. Well, it makes me laugh. Give me that money. Don't you answer that door. Horace, maybe... Right there. Come along with me, boys. All right. All right, I admit. I admit, what do you want me to do? Identify the body. All right, all right, I'll identify the body. The records show a discrepancy of several thousand dollars. On Mavis' book. 
I know. I know. I've been planning it for a long time. I didn't expect the auditors until next week. Mr. Rogers! This firm owes you a note of thanks, Mr. Maybe. What? You've prevented a serious embezzlement from taking place. I have? <laughs> I have? If you had knocked him down, he'd be across the state line with a couple of million dollars, and you'd be holding the bag. <laughs> but not this bag. The bookie told us what was in it. Come along with me, Mr. Maybe. <laughs> After you, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> you watch your step. Eddie, the dog running tomorrow. Easy money. You're always right with Autolite.